Hi guys, it's Chantal from Red Page Cafe. Uh, how are you guys? Uh, hopefully my voice works for me. So far, we're good. Um, I am battling a, a lovely cold. <clears throat> and it is minus 37 today. So I just decided that I would show you guys how to make a very simple... Um, these are just the covers that I've been working on. I just wanted to kind of show you guys. This is what I've got so far. Okay. And I will show you how different ways you can make these covers, different ways, like this one has little ridges. Um, this one's just material using stuff that you have at home. Okay. So I want to keep this series very simple so today we're just going to start by finding what you need okay so i'm sure that you guys i've got this on my on my the bottom because uh keep this part a little cleaner so this is kind of my inking and cutting board <laughs> so i'm sure that you guys all have some kind of cardboard boxes now what i do i usually typically don't usually use meat product card or but this one, not card, sorry, cardboard, because um, sometimes they get dirty. But this one is very, very clean inside. You can see that. And uh, so I decided, and it's quite sturdy. So, and then I looked at the size of it. This is what I look for. And it is almost like the perfect size. It's almost six and a half, but I'll cut it down probably to six. Or I might do a wrap around. I'm not sure yet. We will see. And it's nine and a half. Now I like it usually about nine inches tall or let's see centimeters. What it is. Nine inches. What is nine inches? Nine inches about there. <clears throat> so about 23 centimeters, give or take. That's the kind of size I like. And then it's 16, but it's usually about 15, I think, centimeters for six inches. Yeah. I usually do six inch and this spine will be quite large what I'll show you guys I might show you guys I don't know we'll see as how it goes I might do it's three almost three and a half inches or <clears throat> excuse me eight centimeter eight and almost nine centimeters wide so first things first I will literally show you what I do, my process, uh, when I just use cardstock. I'm trying to make this series very simple for all the people that might want to know. Okay, so first things first, I find the side that has this kind of spot, usually most, or you can use the, uh, see it comes apart easily. You can use a um, cardboard box as well, like a cereal box is a good one as well. Now, at first you might think, well, this is not strong enough. This, All of these were made with cardboard boxes. And you, I will show you as I go along how you can make them sturdier. They're quite, they're actually decent. And I, I mean, I don't use this, the flimsiest ones. And all these journals will probably have layers on it. And this one, I'll show you guys how I finish it off. This is just one I just started. So what you do first is <clears throat> you cut off all these bits, right? All these edges. So you want a pair of scissors. Now, I'm trying to think what I want to do. Because if you go like this, then you can have... I'll make, I'll keep, we'll keep it simple, <laughs> right? So I will cut this part off, this part off, all these bits, because I just want these two to be my covers. The rest of these, I'm, well, you know, we could fold them in like that and make pockets out of them. Hmm. Well, for now, we'll cut the ends, okay? So just use my scissors. And then what I do, because this box is a bit bigger than what I need, so what I'm gonna do is use my paper cutter to trim off the edges edges to make sure they're straight. Because I don't want a wonky book, right? 
So I hope you guys are all doing well. Like I said earlier, it is cold. My kids are all home, but they're kind of busy right now. So that's why I thought I'd turn the camera on. So if it gets loud or if somebody just runs into my office, I will have to stop it. But I'll keep going until, until it happens. Um, so what you do is you just cut all these ends, right? And, uh, what we, what I'll make today is I'm going to use fabric on the outside. So if you want to grab some fabric, I'll show you what I do with the fabric. So this, now use up what you've got. Like, don't go out of your way. Fabric is nice to start with because it, it bends, right? So what I do now is I just check to see if it's straight, right? You can usually see, see how it's not very straight. And I want to make sure I have the right height. Now I need to purchase a bigger and better cutter. So just bear with me while I do this. So I literally just trim it, okay? So I know approximately where I am. I turn it around and just go like that. I could see here the little bit of a cut too. So I just kind of line it up with that and then I line it up with the top. I'm just trying to make sure that I've got it straight. Now I'm hoping, I'm going to do uh, this series and I hope you enjoy it. But I was just wondering if you guys want me to post it like more often so you don't have to wait. Because it'll be probably 20 to 30 minute videos so it doesn't get so long, you know. So what I'm going to do, I was wondering if you guys, see I can see the little mark here so I'm just going to use my scissors for that one if you guys want me to load them up quicker let me know um but otherwise i will load them up probably every i don't know at least once a week minimum possibly see how much straighter that is sorry <laughs> it like flew right on my hands if i fold it down I can see the edges right here, how straight they are, right? So much better. So now this is when I turn it around and that's when I measure. I'm sorry if I'm not in frame, guys. I'm just gonna move these things out of the way so I have a little more room. Okay, so I want it nine inches tall right here, see? So I place it like that and I hold it down. Now, it's not always easy. To cut it because you got to do like almost layers and because my cutter oh well put it back underneath like i had it <clears throat> is not very sharp i need a better one like a guillotine would be awesome i have to do both sides so i just push down as much as i can and then i flip it like i did earlier and i line it up with the nine again and then I cut it. And sometimes it works and other times it doesn't. So I'm going to try to Sorry guys. I am going to move it around a little bit and try to line it up. Sorry if my head goes in the camera you guys. got it now it's not always very easy sometimes <laughs> but see how it's got like it's it's showing me where the mark is so I can easily use my scissors and finish it off now if I had a proper cutter which I'm going to invest in one because tools are important right I literally just follow line okay now I was just thinking as I was cutting this I don't know that I want it this wide 
So I think I'm going to cut these flaps off and just do a simple journal. Now, another thing you wanna check when you're doing a journal like this is your cover. Let's say your cover is dark like this. You can gesso it and then make it, depending on your material, like if you have a thick material, like this is the material I wanna use. I think it should be okay because it's quite like, I mean, you can't really see through it. But if you have a, a thinner material, you want to make sure that your wings or your, your black paper doesn't go through, right? The color, <coughs> excuse me. So just, just a thought, right? Another thing you could do is just paint it white or whatever color you choose on the outside or you could also choose to use this on the inside on the outside like this and then when you put your this one what we're going to do <coughs> is put cardstock inside so cardstock is usually thicker than material so you should be able to cover this dark or paint you can use white paint or gesso will work as well because it'll just dull it down, right? So now I want these to be six. So I just use this little indentation here and I bring it straight. I have a little mark here on my cutter so I know where to cut. So that's how I get my six because it's usually a pretty good a size I use quite a bit. So and then I just push a couple times. I was going to use these flaps as, you know, flip inside but I think I'm just going to leave it for this one because it's it's wider than I wanted oh of course right that's okay though because we're going to cover it so it's not a big deal I'm just going to clean the edge here and then I do the same with the other side so I find my six line it up and then I just cut it like so okay so just take this part off and then you've got yourself a cover okay so what i think i will do with this one maybe do it this way here you go so now next thing we're going to do is cover it so this is a i went to a thrift store and i saw this gorgeous material well, it's actually for a pillow. It's a pillow cover. So what I thought I would be cool is just to take a piece and just take it and then take it apart, right? Because it's such beautiful material. And it was at a thrift store, so I got it for barely anything. So look around your craft store. Um, you can also do this with paper, but I'll show you what works best for when you personally, I like material better. So now, as you can tell, there's already this little part, right? So I will utilize that because <laughs> that would have been a uh, pillow sham, I guess. I think that's what they're called. So I just go and I'm just going to squeeze her in there all the way to the corner. And then the, the parts where I don't have the edges, I'm going to cut that piece around. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm sure you got proper material scissors it doesn't like just sorry i'm gonna move it i don't have a ton of room but i want you guys to kind of see okay so i'm just utilizing the cover because it's already folded there will be a little bit more strings just because the stitching from i'm gonna move my coffee otherwise i might dip my material i really love this uh kind of neutral color so I figured why not right so now I will take about the same amount right so or more then you can always trim it doesn't matter whatever is easier so just cut around like that and then go all the way around just like and now we're gonna get rid of this material so we have room to work on this. Got a needle there. Okay, so 
hopefully this uh, material or this material this pattern is not too much of a pain to watch so now you find now it's already folded right here so I'm just going to get it organized here and what I do because I saw this on the outpost I believe Pam the outpost something oh my goodness I was having the same problems with my corner when I cut them I trimmed them the corner I tend to uh, not like sometimes the corner pops out so she did this thing and I thought it was brilliant so we're gonna try it out <laughs> so thank you Pam I will link her video below as well she's got some great videos she's pretty new to YouTube but I'm sure you guys already know about her she's been here since um, she's been on YouTube since uh, June I think anyways so thank you Pam for this idea so what do I do now is I line it up make sure I have all the corners and I do the corners first okay so we're gonna just put a big blob there another big blob here and oops sorry guys kind of moved my cardboard there hopefully I'm still in frame yep 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 and I use Fabri-Tac because I am using material at the moment I don't know why I'm putting it away I'm going to be using it again so what I do is I find the corner and then this one's already bent so I'll just do this one real quick it's not really working with me though so I'm just going to do my corner like that oops sorry I don't know why I'm saying sorry not your fault eh? <laughs> and then I will bend it maybe using the edge wasn't such a great idea so I want it like tight right and then I'll fix this guy as well and then we'll put this guy nice thing about fabric is that you can pull it tight now with Fabrifix, uh, Fabrifix you also have a little bit of time to like if you still have time to get so if you pull it tight you don't have to glue underneath you just grab it and then you so then the next thing you want to do you want to do a cross right I'm just trying to see here oh, there's that lovely thread from the the last project still on there I'm not too 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 concerned about this line from the stitching because I'll do my own stitching and you won't see that so now I want to make sure that it's tight right so now we're gonna do the one side and the one side and then this side and then this side so fabric tag put some on the edge here the edge of your cardboard because you, and I usually put it like on kind of the edge here sorry you can't really see can you with the dark and because it's a thicker material we shouldn't have too many problems and I just pull it right just like that and it'll just give you a nice clean edge on here as well so there you go and then I flip it and now you can pull it nice and tight so that you make sure that it's on there properly this corner yeah, it's still okay see because the indentation is right there but doesn't mean that I will use it because I want it to be nice and tight so now I put glue here I was just looking at the time. I think I took the one that's almost empty. 
I usually have a couple. I got a couple bottles here. Got another one, so. And then corner, corner right. I should have put some here. I didn't, because you don't want your corners to be flipping up, right? Okay, so now, now I will stitch this. So um, I'm not too worried about how much fabric tack I have. I wanted to like grab, and this is kind of how I go about it. I just pull on it and then I bring it tightly across, right? And this is cardboard, so I will be able to put this through my machine, which I will. That's the nice thing about the cardboard. Oops, there's a thread there and I just pulled the other guy out. So we'll fix that. Okay. So now, oops, sorry. Now, see how tight it is? Now the last part is pulling these guys that way, right? Oh, there's a little bit of a mess here going on. So I will pull it again. Put some more, more fabric tack on that corner. Again. Then, because it's not quite tight enough. And I don't like the little wrinkle that's happening on the other, this side. So then I'll fix this corner as well again. So don't worry about the... You can always, fabric tack, you can always put more. Oops, I'm dripping. So now I go on this edge, put some over here. Whoops. Goodness, I'm making a mess. So then you turn it this way and I pull it again. Pull and squish it down, right? I'll check these corners when I'm done anyways, right? And that's kind of how I do it, right? See how nice and tight that is and how a nice corner you got? I'm gonna fix this guy again because I you know, and that's a nice thing about material. You can always move it. With Fabri-Tac, you usually have a little bit of time anyways. And I will, like I said, I'll sew this around. So, oops. Oh, I got a big globber. Sorry. I'm just going to put it on the edge. <laughs> no big deal. And then you can... Just flatten it out, right? I use my lovely tool, or you can use a bone folder too if you want. It'll just grab it a bit better. Okay. And then these little threads, I'll trim them after. Not a big deal. So now, I've got the last side. And then I'll check all the sides, you know, make sure that they're down right. And what I usually do is I wait until they're, it's so, like quite, it's dry before I sew through it just because I just don't want it. <clears throat> I want to make sure, I don't want a bunch of gloopies in my machine. So then you just pull it, right? Use your fingers. And just pull tight. Now you can go this way as well and push it down, but you just want to oops, make sure that you have it nice and tight so that you have a nice crisp edge and then you have this awesome. Crisp all the way around, see? So that when you fold it, you got a beautiful cover, I think. And then I just look at the material and figure out what I want on the front. And this is gonna be a big one. <laughs> 
So that is the spine. And I think I'm going to keep the rose on the front. And then what I do after is I just check, make sure that it, they are all down really good. Now, if you are not going to sew this, I would add more glue on the edges, okay? What I will do is I will sew all the way around, okay? And then once I'm done sewing it, I will sew like all the way around. And then once I'm done sewing it, I will show you guys how we do the inside. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you try and craft along with me and uh, I'll be back with the sewing. Thanks so much and have a great day. Talk to you soon.